Chapter 8 Covering Day of Atonement I received the lyrics for this song exactly a year after I got the lyrics for Accepted. It was during the same season around the Day of Atonement in 2012. The truths within these lyrics will help prepare us for the return of Jesus. Covering You've placed me beneath the sweet incense produced by your suffering, Jesus. You've clothed me with the beauty of humility. You've covered me in the warmth of your love. Thank you for a willing spirit. Thank you for a faith in your sacrifice. And mercy with my immaturity. Thank you for a new start every morning. Blameless in your sight I am now, tied into your heart's desire. Faultless you are presenting me before the Father with joy. You sat down next to him. The plan is working, and I'm resting in you. Thank you for a holy blood that never stops speaking, that never stops cleansing me as I reason with you. This blood is preparing me for the day you call me to your side. You've placed me beneath the sweet incense produced by your suffering, Jesus. You've clothed me with the beauty of humility. You've covered me in the warmth of your love. When we accepted Jesus and put our faith in his sacrifice, something wonderful happened. Part of the operation of God was to have a people that looked blameless to him. We were placed beneath a cloud of incense that covered all of our sin. To understand why this should make us shout hallelujah, we need to know some background about one of the practices of the Jewish people in the Old Testament. Once a year, the high priest was instructed to take a handful of incense, which had been beaten into a fine powder. This represented the beatings which Jesus would have to endure for us. Then the high priest took some live coals from the fire and, after entering the most holy place, quickly put that handful of incense on the coals. Instantly a sweet-smelling cloud arose and covered the mercy place above the ark. The high priest became immersed in the cloud and it reached up and pleased God. Then, when the father looked down, he saw the high priest through the cloud, which represented Jesus and his suffering. The high priest's life was spared from the stroke of God's wrath by a substitute sacrifice. The priest's acceptance by God rested in what the incense represented. Leviticus 16, 6, 11 through 13. Jesus went in as our high priest before our Father with all of our sins placed upon him. He had no covering and felt the full blast of judgment on sin for everyone. A cloud arose from the burning incense, which Jesus represented, that spread around the world. It moved through history to Adam, and it spread through all time and space, including right up into the end of the millennial reign of Christ. It covered all people of all generations who have placed their trust in the everlasting atonement covering produced by the sacrifice of Jesus. In my great uncle Roland Buck's book, Angels on Assignment, we learn that the seven priorities of God tie to the seven feasts of Israel. These are the seven things that God wants us to be talking about. The blood of Jesus, the Passover feast, fellowship with God, the feast of unleavened bread, the resurrection of Jesus, the feast of first fruits, the promised Holy Spirit, the feast of Pentecost, sharing the gospel, the feast of trumpets, the atonement of Jesus, the feast of atonement, and the return of Jesus, the feast of tabernacles. The feast before the last one is the feast of atonement. It's the one that will prepare us for the return of Jesus. How can we produce the things that God wants to produce in our lives if we are constantly listening to accusations and condemnation from the enemy? Atonement means to cover anything that could keep you from having peace with God. 
knowing our position with God underneath that beautiful covering can help us utilize our energies toward allowing God to make our lives become channels for His life to flow through. Thank you for a willing spirit. Thank you for a faith in your sacrifice and mercy with my immaturity. Thank you for a new start every morning. When our hearts responded to God's drawing and we became born again, He gave us a new nature. God is looking at the want to inside of us now. He is the one that has inspired a faith in our hearts. He is merciful to our immaturity and He gives us a new start every morning. God has a timeline that includes the smallest, minutest parts of each of our lives. That timeline moves right along as we link arms with Him. If we miss Him on some turn of the road, His plan for us begins fresh every day. Every day has things planned out by God that He wants to accomplish in your life. And He doesn't want you sweating about some bad turns you made in the past. God cares more about the present state of your heart, and each day you can begin fresh because the mercies of God are new every day. Let God know you want to be ready for His use and just start yielding now and trusting that, if necessary, He can do recalculating in His heavenly GPS system of the Spirit. He guides us through many avenues such as the Word, our renewed minds, other believers, signs and wonders, inner peace, angels, dreams, God-inspired desires, visions, and other means and gifts of the Spirit. Blameless in your sight I am now, tied into your heart's desire. Faultless you are presenting me before the Father with joy. You sat down next to him. The plan is working, and I'm resting in you. Because of that covering, we appear blameless in God's sight. This is the operation and plan of the ages. Jude one twenty four says that Jesus is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory in triumphant joy and exaltation. Hebrews 10.12 says, Whereas this one, Christ, after he had offered a single sacrifice for our sins for all time, sat down at the right hand of God. This is something the high priest was not allowed to do under the Old Testament laws. But Jesus sat down, which signifies that the plan was finished and final. There will be no more sacrifice for sins. The plan is working now, and he wants us to rest in it. The new agreement has begun. The era of the new covenant has started, and the plan is perfect. Jesus paid my debt, canceled the charges, and took complete care of it. All of my sins are blotted out, cast into the sea of forgetfulness, out of sight, out of God's mind and memory forever. He doesn't remember the sins that I committed. I'm not an ex-liar or an ex-anything to God because it's washed away. I've been restored to a place of total innocence before God. Tell the enemy if he continues to accuse you, what part of all don't you understand? Thank you for a holy blood that never stops speaking, that never stops cleansing me as I reason with you. This blood is preparing me for the day you call me to your side. The writer of Hebrews 12.24 tells us that we have come to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood which speaks a better and nobler and more gracious message than the blood of Abel. I believe along with many other theologians that Paul was the writer of the book of Hebrews. When Paul died and went to heaven later, he saw the blood of Christ. The blood is speaking on our behalf before the Father. In the holy place, the blood had to do all of the speaking. All life has a voice, a sound of some sort. Some people, including Minister John Paul Jackson, have seen that the universe is made up of musical notes. There is life in the blood of Jesus. His blood represents what he is and what he did while on earth. All of the power of the Godhead is wrapped up in that blood, and it lives on. When God sees his blood, he sees the sacrifice of his son and what his son did for us. It meets all of the demands for his justice and righteousness to be satisfied. It says, not guilty, on our behalf. When Jesus took our sins, the wrath of God reached out and struck that sin. And now, any barrier of sin that would come in between us, when we look to God in faith, 
is consumed, and the wrath then turns around because it sees the blood and hides itself in the love of God. His wrath is still there for sin, but he can justify us because his wrath sees the blood over us and knows judgment has already struck. When our faith is in his blood, the wrath of God cannot penetrate because it has already spent its charge on sin. The blood of Jesus is the substance that makes the operation of God's work of salvation come alive. It brings the favor and life of Jesus to us. It brings the atmosphere of heaven to us. It's the most valuable substance in the universe throughout eternity. Jesus' blood reveals to us that God's desire and longing to commune with us was so great that he was willing to leave all that he loved, the Father, so we could be with him forever. Jesus tasted the second death for us. Hebrews 2.9, Revelation 26. I believe that he was willing to feel as though he would be lost forever in order to have us close to his heart. The second death is another name for hell or being cast into the lake of fire, where the devil and lost souls will stay separated from God's love forever. Jesus didn't just taste the physical death that is appointed for us, but also the second death. This is what Jesus felt on the cross for us. He felt the wrath and condemnation and judgment for our sins. And the sentence of judgment for our sins is everlasting fire. Another thing the blood would say if we could hear it speaking to us would be, You are my joy, the joy that helped me endure the pain of being separated from my Father based on Hebrews 12.2. Isaiah 1.18 says, Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be like wool. Matthew 24.40 says of the last days, At that time, two men will be in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. The Greek word for taken is paralambano. It means called to one side in an affectionate manner. Paralambano in this passage refers specifically to the coming of Jesus for his people during the time of the rapture. There will be a day when Jesus calls us to his side. Gabriel told my uncle Roland Buck that it would be totally contrary to the character of God for even one believer to go through even one day of the great tribulation time. 1 Thessalonians 5.9 says that God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Immediately following the time he calls us to his side will be a seven-year wedding feast of the Lamb. The blood of Jesus is what prepares us to be the spotless bride for this time. During this time, the believer's judgment for rewards will be happening as well. According to 1 John 1.7, but if we are living and walking in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have true fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanses us from all sin and guilt. There is a constant cleansing going on underneath the blood covering. There are different viewpoints about what Scripture teaches about the end times. My viewpoint is based in part on revelations and teachings of my great uncle. God is light, and every time we pray and fellowship with God, we access His light, and the cleansing flows to us. And 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, His blood is continually cleansing us. My great uncle Roland Buck taught that Jesus' blood is one of the seven barriers of protection that God has placed around every born-again member of the body of Christ. He taught that the other six barriers around believers are an inner hatred of evil, angelic forces directed by the love of God by the Spirit, Jesus' intercession for us, the Holy Spirit within us, a hedge of protection, Psalms 19.1 and Job 1.10, and the power of fellowship and prayer from other believers. I'll close with the poem I wrote about the blood of Jesus. Everlasting Atonement. Jesus is pleading. His blood is still speaking. Not guilty, it's saying for me. Continually, it's cleansing me, everlastingly for free, so all may see his beauty shining out through you and me.